You know, people often ask about the future of green building. And, and I have to sort of chuckle that the future of building is green. Because if we don't take on a more environmentally responsible approach to the built environment, uh, we're going to continue to take a slippery ride down a very tall slope. Our world is changing. Data shows that we have approximately 400 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And meteorologists and climate scientists have irrefutable proof that that level of CO2 and other heat trapping greenhouse gases are creating rising temperatures, extreme weather events, approximately a 5% increase in moisture, which is causing more rain and humidity in our climate, as well as a dome effect around urban areas where heat is getting trapped into cities. And we're seeing a fairly rapid worsening of indoor air quality in those urban areas. Over the last 50 years or so, we've begun to understand that it's a two-way street and that there's a cause and effect that the built environment actually has a big impact on the natural environment. And that's escalating over time. If we look at our transportation issues, if we look at our resource depletion, if we look at the impact that we're having on all the ecosystems around the world, we can bring many of those things back to the way we construct, the way we design, uh, and the way we plan for the future. Each one degree rise in temperature is apparently causing approximately a 4.2% increase in sea level. So just in the U.S. alone, given our current level of carbon dioxide and pollution and emissions in the atmosphere, that is expected to cause approximately a four-foot increase in sea levels, which will affect about 316 cities and about 3.6 million people across the U.S., mostly in states like California, Florida, Texas, North Carolina, New York, and New Jersey. Some scientists say that we will see a 24-foot increase in sea levels over the course of this century, which would affect, again, in the U.S. alone, over 14,000 cities and approximately 18 million people. As we experience more extreme weather, we're going to have to develop more viable strategies for dealing with things like drought, wildfire, superstorms, floods, tornadoes, and hurricanes as well as our diminishing resources, particularly as it relates to energy, water, and natural materials. It's really interesting when we look at the movement toward a more green-built environment because it's very uneven. Uh, the landscape out there is, is drastically different from one part of the world to another and from one part of the country to another here in the United States. Uh, there are places that are very advanced and, and extremely in tune with the need to have uh, uh, much more efficient use of resources and more durability, more resiliency. We've discovered that the, uh, the impact of these intensified uh, weather events, for example, and the changes that we see in, in climate uh, are having a tremendous impact. And, and we learn, we have to stop and think about the amount of resources that it takes to rebuild when we don't do a good job the first time. So resiliency and durability are going to be tantamount to a successful built environment going forward. So all of this is leading for a growing need to have a smarter built environment with intelligent products and software tools that help us understand how we optimize our resources, our energy efficiency, and to create better spaces in which we can work and live and play. We're always looking for forward-thinking solutions and for ways to uh, provide a more sustainable future for today and future generations.